everyone and welcome to a 7 days to die tutorial for the console edition. Today we're going to be playing on the PlayStation 4 and we're going to be playing on the Navisgain map. The purpose of this tutorial is to look at surviving your first night and getting started in this game. The first thing you're going to see when you're in this world is a letter from your friend Noah. Noah cares about you and only wants the best for you, so he's going to try to guide you along a little bit at the start. He's going to ask you to do some of the basic things, such as crafting a stone axe, crafting and wearing some plant fiber clothing, crafting a wooden club to keep you protected, crafting a bow and arrows for that ranged attack, starting your base with your wooden frames, crafting a bedroll, and building a campfire. As you start off in the game, there's several things early on that are very important. When you first spawn in, you should pay attention to what biome you're in because the weather and the temperature of these biomes will affect you directly. There's a possibility of the burnt forest, a desert, a forest, pine forest, snowy forest, plains, rural areas, wastelands, and on the edge of the map, you won't spawn here, but there is a biohazard area that will damage you very quickly if you enter it. In this particular case, we've spawned in a desert. Beyond the biome, it's important to pay attention to what else is around you. Is there a shelter available? We're lucky enough to have one here. Is, do you see any food or water sources? Other resources that might be useful. Since we're in a desert, we have access to the yucca plants. Also, any threats. When you first spawn in the game, the game is going to give you a short period of time of about five game hours where nothing, no zombies should spawn around you. But it is still important to pay attention. For instance, in the desert, don't step on any cactuses. At this point, we've gathered the resources necessary to craft our stone axe. We've also gathered enough plant fiber to craft our clothing. I've also crafted a hat because we are in the desert, even though it's not part of the quest. And we've been lucky enough to find some cloth that's allowed me to craft a bandana to keep me cool. I also accidentally equipped the puffer coat, which is going to heat us up. We've also been lucky enough to find some other things. Even though we still need to go through the, the quest for our skill point later on, we have found a better club than the wooden club we're going to craft. For our weapons, we're going to need wood for the club, wood and plant fiber for the bow, and wood, stone, and feathers for the arrows. Feathers can be found, as we saw early on, inside of bird nests, but they can also be found in other lootables. Arrows can also have other tips, such as iron and steel-tipped arrows. But in, in this case, the easiest and most accessible will be stone. Stone can be found on the ground or also in large rocks that can be mined using appropriate tools. Now that we can defend ourselves, it's time to start our base. For that, we're going to need some more wood. You'll notice I've already crafted our second stone axe, and this one is level 2. Each time you craft an item, your skill in crafting of those type of items will increase, and with higher levels increases the level of those items, and that increases their effectiveness and overall durability. When mining any resource in the game, the final hit on that resource is going to give you a much bigger payload. So for example, if you're getting one per hit on a tree, that final hit might give you 20 wood. It's important to secure your house in a way that the zombies can't just see on the inside and then want to join you on the inside. To do that, I like to break all the windows out and replace those with solid blocks such as wood frames and then go around and check for any other damage and go ahead and repair those blocks up as well. Here we see the player heat coming into effect. Since I accidentally put our puffer coat on, you can see the player starting to overheat and I finally realize it and take it off. Some items have many levels of repair. In this case, we have some iron, so we're going to upgrade our door beyond the wood level and add some of that iron to protect it. Now let's place our bedroll. In the event that you do die, you will be given the option to spawn on or near your bedroll. If no bedroll has been placed, then you'll just respawn somewhere randomly in the world. The final item remaining on our quest from Noah is to place a campfire. The campfire is used to cook food and boil water and those sorts of things. Now that we've got that placed, we're going to also receive one skill point for completing that quest that can be used to improve many different skills in the skill tree that we will also touch on later. Time management plays a very important role in Seven Days to Die. What you choose to do with your time may be the determining factor on whether or not you live. While there's no zombies that know about us, I'm going to get our house upgraded. Eventually the zombies will find you and will need to be taken care of. Crouching is a good indicator of whether or not the zombie is aware of you. The indicator will show hunted if it is. As always, headshots is going to work best when dispatching a zombie. Sometimes the zombies will fall and appear to be dead, even though they're not. Hitting them while they're down will do a bonus stun damage. 
once you're feeling comfortable with your setup, I like to kind of go around the area near my house and see if there's anything we've missed. Is there any, if there's a water source that we're not aware of? Is there any food, uh, be it animals or lootables that we can find that contain food? Is there any threats around that we haven't already taken care of? Zombies kind of wandering around. In our case here, we were so lucky to kill a zombie and actually get a pistol off of it, which is pretty rare for the first day. Once we've established that all of those things are taken care of, I like to kind of put some defenses around the house if you have the wood available. Some wood spikes can't hurt. If you're playing the game on default settings at 2200, the sun will be completely set, darkness will set in, and at that point, the zombies begin to run. I don't recommend shooting your gun into the air as I do here because noise does attract the zombies. You'll, you'll notice the stinger that happens once the game rolls over to 2200. Now that it's nighttime and you've locked yourself away inside your house, assuming you did your job during the day and you're safe, the zombies should not know about you. If you make a lot of noise, the zombies can sense you, but there's still tons of things you can do to plan out your next day. You can go through all the resources that you currently have available to you. Is there anything you need to craft that might be useful for tomorrow's adventure? Is there any food you need to cook? Keeping in mind that food can smell and cooking can attract zombies. Also, there's the skill tree. We've earned one skill point today from doing our quest from Noah. If you've gained any levels, you'll have other skill points. There's a ton of skills available in the skill tree, and this is a good time to kind of go through all of those and see what is going to work for your playstyle. If all things went well, then you'll be hearing the sound of 6 a.m., and that means that the zombies are no longer running. It's a new day, and a new adventure will continue. This is only the beginning of your journey. Keep in mind that each day the game will get slightly more difficult and every seventh day there will be a blood moon that comes with a whole horde of zombies that are instantly hunting you. I hope that this tutorial has helped you prepare yourself for what's to come. Enjoy yourselves.